Microsoft is slated to announce a new AI chip, and global governments are racing to figure out AI regulations. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We start with a story that is something that we've been watching and getting little rumors about for some time now. Of course, with the dominance of NVIDIA, the high cost of compute, the challenges of just getting access to enough compute, basically every big tech company is trying to figure out different solutions to AI chips. Last week, we discussed reports that OpenAI is even considering building their own chips, and OpenAI partner Microsoft has long been thought to be in development of their own AI chips. According to a report from The Information last Friday, Microsoft is now finally planning to unveil their first official chip at their annual developer conference, which is coming up next month. Now, importantly, whereas a lot of today's chip startups and alternatives are focused on more specific or different use cases, this chip is purportedly going directly after NVIDIA GPUs. In other words, it is designed for use in data centers and for the training of these massive LLMs. The project was codenamed Athena, and earlier in the year, when reporting suggested that AMD might be involved, just the rumor alone was enough to send AMD's stock soaring. Microsoft later denied that AMD had any involvement. Now, according to the information source, a small handful of employees from both Microsoft and OpenAI have been testing the chips. It also isn't clear how the performance compares to, for example, NVIDIA's H100. Now, interestingly, this project apparently started back in 2019, right around the same time it invested a billion dollars in OpenAI. According to the information, quote, when Microsoft began working more closely with OpenAI, it determined that the cost of buying GPUs to support the startup, Azure customers, and its own products would be too high. Now, of course, Microsoft is far from alone in this thinking. Google has its tensor processing units, and Amazon just announced a big deal with Anthropic that was in large part focused on their chips as well. Now, interestingly, although most of Wall Street has been super bullish on AI all year, one analyst right now is making news based on an assessment that it's overhyped and that actual use cases will lag in the coming year, in large part because of the increasing costs around AI. The report is from CCS Insight and comes as part of the company's annual roundup of predictions for the future of the technology industry. The main forecast that they list for next year is that generative AI, quote, gets a cold shower in 2024. Said CCS Insights chief analyst Ben Wood, quote, We are big advocates for AI. We think it's going to have a huge impact on the economy. We think it's going to have big impacts on society at large. We think it's great for productivity. But the hype around generative AI in 2023 has been just so immense that we think it's overhyped and that there's lots of obstacles that need to get through to bring it to market. Specifically, Wood continued, just the cost of deploying and sustaining generative AI is immense. It's all very well for these massive companies to be doing it, but for many organizations, many developers, it's just going to become too expensive. Now, on that front, another piece of related news is that Lambda Labs, which is effectively a startup competing with AWS for renting out servers of NVIDIA chips to AI companies, is on the verge of closing a $300 million venture round. Lambda is far from the only company providing that type of service. Another rival, Coreweave, is also out in the market trying to sell around a half billion dollars of employee shares. The Coreweave sale would value the company at around $6 billion, while the Lambda financing would see a valuation of $1.5 billion. Now, in addition to the cost of compute, the CCS report also thought that regulation is going to be a challenge, although not just for the companies themselves, but also for the regulators. Basically, their argument is that things are moving so fast on the technology front that it's likely that even past legislation like the EU AI Act gets updated and refined over and over again as it tries to catch up. Meanwhile, one of the things that looms large for those regulators in different countries around the world is the extent to which China is focused on AI as a technology to get out ahead of geopolitical rivals. The country announced a new plan on Monday of this week that targets an increase of the country's computing power by 50% by 2025. The announcement came from six aligned government departments and set the target computing capacity at 300 exaflops. Now for China, the calculus is pretty simple. Akshara Basi, a senior research analyst at CounterPoint, said, China has found that traditionally every one yuan invested in computing power has driven three to four yuan in economic output. And yet it's not as easy as just buying more compute. The U.S. right now has strict sanctions on the country when it comes to critical AI inputs like NVIDIA GPUs. Indeed, Bassi called access to latest and best-in-class AI GPUs as the primary obstacle that the country faces. Now, we reported a couple weeks ago about how the U.S. was expanding some of those bans and restrictions to a number of different Middle Eastern countries with the concern that those countries were conduits for China to actually surreptitiously get access to the AI chips the U.S. government was trying to deny them access to. 
The Financial Times reported about this again this week, writing, Saudi-China collaboration raises concerns about access to AI chips. The article profiles recent moves from the Gulf region to release Arabic-focused large language models and other bespoke AI tools for an Arabic-speaking audience, and discusses the fine line that the U.S. is walking as relates to the Chinese-Saudi collaboration. FT writes, the U.S. has expanded export license requirements for graphic processing units made by NVIDIA and AMD, preventing Chinese entities from accessing the chips that are vital in building generative AI models. But the Biden administration has stopped short of blocking exports to the Middle East. Meanwhile, another relationship that is changing based on the need to provide a counterweight and bulwark to China is the relationship between the EU and Japan. Reuters recently reported comments from the EU saying that they see a convergence with Japan on AI regulations. Said the European Commission Vice President for Values and Transparency, Vera Jourova, I was recently in China and it's a totally different thing. I could discuss with our Japanese partners because we do not have to explain to each other basic, basic things. I see a lot of convergence in how we, the EU and Japan, look at AI and generative AI. Now, reinforcing this idea, the Japanese Prime Minister said on Monday that he expects that we will have international AI regulations by Christmas this year. Now, he's referring specifically to a coordinated approach that's known as the Hiroshima AI process that involves the G7 nations, including the United States, Canada, Japan, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Italy, and which might touch on topics ranging from governance to IP rights to disinformation to responsible use. Over in Germany, the person in charge of antitrust has delivered a warning that AI has the potential to increase big tech's dominance. Andreas Munt told Reuters in an interview on Friday, For us as a competition authority, it is crucial that this new technology does not further strengthen the dominance of the large corporations. The danger is very great because you need two things above all for AI, powerful servers and vast amounts of data. Big internet corporations have both. One additional piece that we've noted here on the show that has emerged as another reason that incumbents have an edge is that enterprises are more likely to trust companies they already work with and who already have access to or visibility into some of their data, as opposed to smaller startups who they might not trust with that privileged information. Lastly, as the UK government prepares for its AI summit at the beginning of November, they are trying to pin down participating nations to agree to some set of statements about AI risks. Writes The Guardian, Rishi Sunak's advisors are trying to thrash out an agreement among world leaders on a statement warning about the risks of artificial intelligence as they finalize the agenda for the AI safety summit next month. Now, in addition to statements, there's also been reporting that the UK is thinking about establishing something they call an AI safety institute, although that reporting has been downplayed somewhat. Now, remember, we talked recently about how the UK was in some amount of international pressure, given that they had invited China to participate in this summit. But the UK's counterpoint was that when it comes to AI safety, there were fairly severe limitations if principles weren't something that China agreed to. It seems quite clear to me that we are going to have a lot more interesting geopolitical dimension conversation about AI in the months to come. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That wraps the brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI breakdown.